can't see far away. I can only see up close with my glasses on. You're down on here. Yeah, you can't see far away from close. I haven't done that. You haven't. I haven't been getting I haven't been getting I never got that. Send that to the wrong email address or what? Don't know. Don't know. But turn off for me. Did it fire it up? Well, it's a good thing you made it tonight because we need needed you for a quarter. Okay. Okay. Are you I ready? have everything running. Are you ready? Mm hmm Okay. Okay, we'll call this... Uh, November meeting of the uh, Muskego Parks and Conservation Committee to order. First item is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, um, Paul and Bill are both excused tonight, and Terry may show up. She's trying to go in the other door, which oh, is Oh, is she be in, in the building? Yeah. yeah <laughs> okay. I think oh, wait that's a second hurt. for her to get up here. She's trying the other meeting room, I think. She probably doesn't here think because we're at the big table. She's yeah, probably she going, like, it can't be in there. I think she went for drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this meeting was uh, noticed in accordance with the uh, open meeting law. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from the October meeting? Everybody get a chance to look at them? Mm -hmm. I motion we approve the minutes from the October <coughs> meeting. Second. <coughs> any, any changes, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. <coughs> We have no old business. We have two items of new business. Annual parking pass for Idlewild. Tammy, you want to talk about this? Sure. We had, um, with the new parking pay stations that were put in, we've had a lot of residents that go there regularly in the mornings um, or on the weekends, and they've asked us to start um, selling a season pass for parking at Idlewild so that they can just come in and park without going up to the pay station. So. We kind of researched prices at other parks. Most of them are only um, county parks that have a season parking pass. Uh, but we looked at what like an average user would do. So we're proposing to sell a different pass. It will be square attached on a different part of the vehicle than the season launch pass, but something that they would be able to purchase and then be able to park at Idle Isle. So we followed similar to what we have with the um, the launching, we have a different rate for seniors and residents, and then a non-resident rate. They can purchase them here um, or potentially at Idle Isle. Our machines still will not allow us to sell passes, but we may have a person there for a while just trying to sell them just to get them available to people. Any discussion? Motion to approve. Move to approve. Second. Second. Everybody's so bashful up here. We feel like we're so spread <laughs> out. <laughs> oh. okay. no, this is so all right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. <clears throat> Approved. Okay. Then we have a uh, proposal for the Beachy Bistro. Everybody should have information in their packet on that. Uh, Scott, is there anything you wanted to say about this? No, I, I think the, the information that I provided to you is, is, is pretty well good. I, I know also, too, that Scott and uh, Christine Dickman are here, too, for you to answer any questions. You know, the, the big thing to, to remember, this is a, you know, 
a, a P3, private-public partnership, would be the first one that the city of Muskego would be going into. Um, it, you know, and, and basically what it means is a private enterprise would be using public land, you know, um, and then it would kind of be uh, giving an operating out of the public own of, out of our own facility. It, very similar ideas. I'm trying to think of ones that you might be familiar with is uh, there's uh, a couple cases where I believe North Point Burger Place, on, on, uh, the, the best ones you see in Milwaukee County a little bit more with a permanent beer gardens. Um, the uh, North Point Bartolotta's runs a place there. I think there's a Pitches Barbecue out of the one in McKinley. Uh, those are just some of the, some of the examples that I, I, I can know I can provide for you. So, but please answer, re review it, ask questions. They're here uh, uh, definitely to, uh, you know, even to provide questions or even if you would like them to talk about it, so. Scott and Christina, right? Yeah. You have anything you want to say or present about this or talk about it before we have discussion? <coughs> you can go up to the go mic. Go to the mic. The microphone, please. Sorry. Can you just make sure it's on if it's... I'm, if, I'm okay. <laughs> the record, we need it for the record. We'll flip it. Towards you. No, push it, push it towards you right there in the top. Yep. Yep. Testing. Yeah. Right, there we go. I feel like should be Ferris Bueller. <laughs> um, so can you can you hear me on this now? Yep. Okay. So sure you got to talk directly into it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> How's that? All That's right. Fine. I'm used to being on that side. No. Okay, so um, Christy and I came to um, Tammy and to Scott and to Mayor Shivarati with this idea a couple, what, probably about a month and a half, two months ago. And, um, you know, we provided some information at that time, and then we had some more discussions with Scott and Tammy um, with respect to what we're looking a little bit deeper. So we came back and we provided that information, and then Scott had asked kind of like what we're looking for as far as, you know, will we need power, um, you know, different permits. We provided that information. Uh, we spoke with, um, we spoke with uh, the state as far as what the other permits we would need. So basically it's just, we would need a food service permit. Um, we would need a, a liquor permit from the city. And then what we did is we outlined basically in that proposal, and I, I think you may have it, um, in your packets, but just kind of showing the delineation there. Um, we've seen this, um, as Scott alluded to, downtown Milwaukee. Um, there's other events that go on at different lakes that Christine and I had uh, attended this year. And what they did is they kind of put up this, this area, and this is more of a permanent situation here. Um, but we took some of those ideas and we had, we had brought those forward as far as saying, okay, you know, here's this area, you know, um, if we were to serve something out of a glass, you cannot go past this location or this piece. Um, but we are looking for something that's more permanent to have a relationship that's long term um, because we're looking to invest uh, quite a bit of money uh, into the facility. Um, and then we did also think about, you know, I mean, I'm fortunate enough to live on Little Mosquito, so I'm there quite a bit to see how many people are there and what the activity is. And we are looking at that. And um, as far as like under the pavilion, you know, on the weekends there are some people that do utilize that for maybe a party or birthday party or something like that. And in the summertime, you know, there might be some parents there that are sitting under there versus out in the sun. But the utilization of that, you know, we felt that we could bring something to that. And then we had also spoke with, I don't know if it was Tammy and Scott or just you, Tammy, because you were talking about like a gazebo or another pavilion or something going up over there. So it's something that we'd be, you know, we, we would, you know, contribute to. Um, that there would still be place for, for people to sit under versus just under that portion of the pavilion. Does that make sense? And we're looking to do, you know, a limited, um, a limited uh, menu, if you will, as well as, you know, having, you know, the certain hours with respect to the park. And then I think we put the times in there as well. So we we tried to be pretty comprehensive with what we provided to you. So I don't know if you had any questions of me. Um, I'm more than happy to answer those. Well, one of the questions that I had is when you're not open, assuming that this were to go through, what 
what access does the public have to the pavilion? Because basically there would be no pavilion any, any longer from what I... Now Correct. you're talking about putting something else in or what you were just saying? Well, and again, this goes back to, you know, having the discussion with Tammy where there's something on the docket already. It, it, it sounded like that you're going to be building an additional pavilion over there of some sorts. Was I correct with that or? Capital or? approved a, a gazebo down by the fishing pier. I think it's a 15 by 15 octagon. I think that was the size of that one. Right. So it's not a large structure, just a shade structure basically down by the fishing pier. Right. So um, with respect to your, to answer your question, um, you know, if we were to put, you know, tables and, and a seating area and things underneath the pavilion, we have, I think I showed you pictures in there of the garage doors and things like that. So it would be kind of an inside outside <coughs> um, uh, arrangement for the bistro. So as far as public access, and that's just an idea that, that I don't know if you've ever been to the horny goat, which is no longer there, but that's, that's kind of the concept with using the pavilion and having that all uh, with the doors and glass around it. So there would not be access after that because we'd be investing that money on interior um, as well as with the, with the kitchen area and things like that. Anybody else on the board? I've got a whole list of questions. I, I was, but the one thing I was I worried about is like the, kind of on the same line, for kids to actually be able to have their birthday parties there, mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of people down there, we were just talking about that, that do that all summer. So we're taking that away then, correct? We do this? Correct. In essence, yeah. I mean, that would be gone. This, this is the reason why we had talked a little bit about having another pavilion of some sorts that would be, you know, where, you know, where the boats park there, right, and the boat launch. So either between from there to um, the pavilion that's existing now or on the other side. Um, because there are, I mean... Unless it rains, there is a lot of, you know, shade and where tables and things are like uh, of that nature. So, but I, un I understand where you're coming from. That's why we had this discussion about, you know, you know, having some type of a pavilion or something where people could still utilize that. Yeah. You've got a lot of modifications or additions listed here that you're, that you want to make to the building. Now, as I understand it, you're proposing that you're going to pay for all that? Yeah, I mean, it, it states it right in the beginning, the very first page, that you yeah, know everything would be from us, and there would be no, everything is going to be paid for up front, so there's no liens or anything against any of that. <coughs> um, as far as the modifications to the existing building, I mean, if you took, take a look at the picture that's up there as an example, so there's already the pillars to the pavilion. You know, just from a structure standpoint, there wouldn't be a whole lot of modifications to it. I mean, if you're looking at some eight by eight pillars that are, you know, that would, would accommodate those doors. It's, it's on the, if, if you want to well, see on the back. Yeah. But basically the, you, you're not, there's not a lot of um, changes that would happen to that pavilion. So if you look at that page that's up there now, <coughs> we'd be adding a part, you know, like a, wherever we needed to, because these doors are eight foot wide and or nine foot wide. So as an example, across the front, there would be like four, four doors that would open up. And there'd be one on one side and one on the other side um, between those posts. And then there's another post where there'd be one with an access door on both sides. <clears throat> and around that perimeter, I kind of just used the graph paper to kind of give you an indication that's not up there right now. But just to show where that delineation would be around the perimeter of that so that there'd be some, once those doors are open, people could sit out a little bit beyond the roof line. Do you see that at all? We've got, everybody's got that. Right. Would the city be obligated for any cost, future costs or anything like that, utilities or? We would cover all of that. And, it, you know, th those are the types of details that we'd have to work out as far as utilities. Um, but again, you know, I, and I know the water bugs utilize the back for storage and things of that nature. So as I mentioned to Tammy and to Scott, you know, the electric there, whatever it is now, it, it can't be all that much. And I, I'm not sure what the bill is right now, but it can't be all that much. So instead of like having a separate meter or whatever, we would just put that all in, inclusive. And we'd be responsible for, for the utility bills, for the insurance, um, whatever, whatever the request was, if it's a $2 million policy or whatever, and having the, you know, I mean, those are all the things that we've thought through. Um, 
and just from my knowledge and you know having a business for a lot of years th these are the things that I've looked at and we've reviewed um, so yeah there would be no there's no cost to um, to the city or to the people of Muskego in addition to that you know we had talked about it, you know again if we were if we were allowed to do this or move forward you know if we wanted to maybe paint it a different color like maybe like a grayish color or something like that to fit more of our motif that's great if we can't so be it but we would pick that up as well and that's just not the front that would be around the whole building okay so um you know i mean you know things that would have to be discussed are you know what what is the city looking for as far as you know from a lease perspective you know i mean there's a lease for the water bugs as an example and what they pay um on a monthly or annual basis you know what are the insurance requirements um you know the length of this with you know ongoing renewal opportunities because we're we're not just coming in here and putting in a couple dollars it's you know tens of thousands of dollars have you had any discussion with the water bugs i haven't talked with them yet because i want to have this discussion first i mean right now i know that they have the lease for that one portion of it and then they have the back um the other side is open I'm, I'm looking at the building right now so the left side is open the right side they have for another year but that's a discussion that i can have with them you know depending upon where we end up here today and i have a pretty good relationship with those people from water bugs um, they happen to utilize a portion of my property for what they do so i, I think we can come to some type of an agreement because i know that um you know just from the sales that they have there it's not a whole lot on a on a wednesday night basis so i know that that's kind of revenue generating for them but i can have those discussions with them i'm a little concerned about parking i mean we've got limited parking on that island as it is mm -hmm. and boat traffic coming in there's no place to more boats Mm -hmm. I mean, have you thought about these things? What, about, sure. I mean, what for, about restroom usage? Well, uh, restroom usage, I've already talked with the county. Um, the gentleman, he actually used to handle Muskego. He said there's plenty of uh, restroom facilities there. Um, when it comes to parking, there's roughly 60 parking spots. I don't remember it's, exactly it's about what 60. the number is. Is that about right? Um, I think so. For, between 45 and 60, because we've added some spots. Yeah. You know, maybe I counted one twice or something, but it was like 60. You know, and then, you know, the boat parking is obviously the boat parking. Um, we have the overflow lot that's up the road. So. Well, I'm just thinking about there really is no place for somebody to come in on a boat to go to, the, go to, go to this pavilion. Well, and, and I mean, there's, there's no boat mooring. No, and I, I understand there's no boat mooring, but they can pull up to the dock there. I mean, they do it now in the summertime i mean generally speaking um people who don't live on the lake pull up to the right side of the beach so you know where the platform is where the water bugs go off of so there's a little space to the right of that and then also to the left of that and there's boats there i mean if there's no parking available for a boat people just don't come in or they're going to be docking you know and bringing their boats out And one of the questions from Scott was, or Tammy, I'm not sure where it came from, but as far as adding a pier or anything of that nature, we're not looking to do any of that. And if somebody did want to park their boat, you know, there is the channel. People do pull up to that channel periodically if it's too busy, like I know, but that's rare does that I've, I've ever seen that. So what do you see the advantage of having this there to be to the general public well i think I see it's, it limiting their access to the park well i think that it's an opportunity for people to come and enjoy that may not have gone there or come there um if we're having coffee in the morning or if they're having a uh, a business meeting in the afternoon or something of that nature it's a nice venue to be at um, it, it's different than anything that we have in the community right now there's there is nothing the only thing would be is um, Bass's Bay, but that's, they don't have anything that's 
right there like that on Little Muskego. We have nothing there. And these are the types of things that, you know, I think we've all heard, not necessarily about our Idle Isle, but having other, uh, other venues within the community to go to and to um, have an opportunity to sit outside. If you take a look, so if you're looking at, um, I just want to go back to the parking piece. So every, yeah, the wine bar, right? Old Jill's, the wine bar. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's limited parking there as well. Granted that that's not public, but there's limited parking there and people do find other places or if they want to, to go there. And I think that that's where the overflow comes because um, people do park up um, at Park Arthur and walk down. So, I mean, and, this, and we're looking to operate this basically four months out of the year and then some weekends maybe later into the season when the fall is, you know, the fall colors are out and things like that before the, draw, the drawdown of the lake. Other board members, comments, questions? Well, I got a comment. I, I vote on Little Muskego quite a bit, take other people out there. And a lot of times it is brought up, they wish that they had some place to go up to and get something to eat. I don't know if I'm in my boat, though, I would go up there and look to beach my boat and eat at the pavilion. I might get something and go back out of my boat and back out of the lake. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Percy, I don't think we have to worry about, you know, boat mooring. But, um, you, know, I, I, you know, just a comment. Pe people have said it would be nice to have something there i you know um if we can make it work you know people have said you know have made that comment to me so and you know we're not looking to make this just you know <coughs> another place this is more of a destination because it's off the beaten path too so you know people are gonna you know <coughs> we want to be able to offer something where people can sit outside have coffee um i'll, I'll give an example so you take a look at uh gingerbread house they're parking out on the street. There's limited parking there as well. And, and I hear about the parking piece, and I guess I get a little bit concerned about I hope that it would be that busy. But it, again, we talked about, you know, how many patrons we'd have there at a, at a given time. So generally people, you know, we would be thinking 60, 70 people at a time <coughs> if it's busy. So people are coming generally two by two or, you know, maybe one person or maybe some people might even just walk down the street from, you know, in the... Uh, uh, in the area. What if people want to use the park and there's no parking stalls there and they don't they don't care about coming to your establishment? And uh, I mean it's an island we've got very limited parking and there's no street parking in that area. And that's true but there'd be no different if if there was it was full and they wanted to use the park before they'd have to go up to the to the overflow. True. I mean there's there's I mean people park on College Avenue in the summertime to come to the lake when there's no parking there. But again, and I appreciate your concern about the parking, but all I can say is that, I mean, I'm out, a, I'm out there almost every day, and I, I think other than the 4th of July or the 3rd of July, I never see that parking lot full. Except for, oh, I take it back, the water bug show. I think it's full on most weekends. Is my but then you know in regards to drawing business to your you know the pavilion there your establishment I don't know if people are going to come if they know it's going to be full and they can't get parking so I you know and that's a risk that that we take if that you know if, if it is full and people don't come because of that that's the risk that we take from that but I do you know I, I agree with you in regards to parking you know it. it when I do go out there and go boating, unless it's during a weeknight, it always seems to be pretty tight for parking. But as you said, there's Park Arthur, and there's usually room up in Park Arthur. Uh, and the boat, the, boat par the boat parking, yeah, I would agree, especially like on Tuesday nights when they have their boat fishery or jamboree or whatever they do every Tuesday. You know, you know what I mean? Right. Well, so I avoid Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Yeah, <laughs> that's because they have the fishing thing going right. on. But, but even but, just not for the trailer parking, regular parking on weekends, it's... I think you you live on the lake, but when when I've been there, it seems like it's yeah. I mean, I mean, there. I mean, Tammy, you're you've been involved with the park for a long time. I mean, do you see that being a major issue, or I, I'm just going to ask you because you know you see what's going on there as far as how much or how busy that parking is. 
I see the prime of the day being very busy, 11 o'clock in the morning till probably 4.35, because um, there are a lot of people that picnic there, so they come in set up. And we've discussed with Scott, like, our concerns, um, because the rest of the park is still going to be used by people, so there's people who are going to come and set up right next to the restaurant, basically, and have a family gathering, and they could have 75, 80 people, because that has happened. So now sure. they're playing loud music, they're grilling their own food, they're doing all that, which will impact his business as well. And, and that, you know, we're, we fully understand that people are going to come. I mean, uh, did I, I, did I kind of, I want to make sure that with this parking well, thing. I, I don't feel like we've got enough information here to make any kind of a decision tonight. I think we need some more public input on this and more detailed proposal of what you're really trying to do. We don't know if the pavilion can even handle the structural modifications you're talking about. And I'm really concerned about public access to the park with, with this being there. <coughs> For just general use of the park. Well, not, to, not just try and sound real negative on it. I'm just looking at the devils in the details. Well, yeah, I mean... I, oh. I, I really don't see an advantage to the city to to have this establishment there. Okay, that's fair. I mean, there's fair. other, there's private businesses in close proximity to that park that uh, would probably deem this as being competition to them on public land. Well, competition is good, and, and it actually would be, it's beneficial to any business when you have additional business there. I mean, it draws additional people, so that's... <laughs> that's not if your any, property is what I'm getting at. It's public land that you're proposing to run a private enterprise on, and I still don't see what the, uh, in your proposal, what the benefit is to the general public, to the city. Well, the, be the benefit is it's an op another opportunity for, for people to go to socialize and enjoy themselves. That, that's, the, that's the long and the short of it. And for profit, yes. I'm not doing it for charity. I, but, I understand but that. But the point, that's the point, is, is that, you know, it's another venue for somebody to go to. Some people may love to go to Lake. Some people may not like to go to Lake. But it's an opportunity for them to have to sit down, have a coffee or a drink with a friend, no different than going anywhere else. But it's a different location. It's a different venue. That I mean, that's that's a differentiator. You know, it may not be a benefit to the city, but it it's a benefit to the people who go there. I think it's a good idea to have food and, uh, you know, things for the people that come that don't want to pack their lunch or grill, you know, to have something there, so. And, and, and here, here's the thing, I mean, um, there have been other private entity businesses in there before, they just have failed um, for whatever reason, but there have been other ones in there. Nothing of this magnitude. Well, and that could that be the differentiator, too. I mean, you know, Sometimes either you're all in or you're not. So we're looking to kind of go all in here, not kind of. We are going all in, and it really depends upon, um, you know, what you think here. And, and I'm willing to answer all the questions, but, you know, uh, to your point as far as what's the benefit, it's another venue. It's another place for somebody to go and enjoy whatever. And some people may not want to even go there because it's Little Muskego Lake. They might choose to go down the road to, you know, well, I don't know, pick another city. So he's pointed out the advantages. What are the disadvantages to the city to do something like this? Parking is going to be bad either way because we always have a problem there. It's, you know, the well, parking, I think the it potentially is, is going to limit access to the general public that wants to use the park that doesn't care about whether this bistro is there or not. Well, See, I guess that's where I, I, I respectfully disagree with that because if somebody still wants to go, if they're coming here or they're not coming here, it's no different. If, if, this, if this never develops, you still have that potential where there's, the park is full. And if the other people are coming there, turn around and leave, they do. I, I guess I, I'm, just, I'm just stuck a little bit with... Everybody still has accessibility. We're not, this isn't getting this isn't shutting down. We're talking well, about we no longer have a pavilion, and, and we've touched on that. We we've you know already the city has kind of earmarked some money for a different pavilion. And if we if 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 well, it was, I don't think that takes the place of the one that we have there. Okay. 
there was a reason that we were looking at adding another pavilion. We, it wasn't because we thought this one was going away. And again, you know, I put on the table that, you know, if we we're looking to do, if this is something that moved forward, we would be willing to do that and, and assist with, with a, a diff, additional place for someone to sit if it's a, a gazebo type thing or, or whatever that is. You know, in a way, I don't see why we're splitting off people that are just going to the pavilion versus people who are just coming to the park. I mean, I think it's just people who are coming to the park that will use your facility. I don't think people are going to maybe not come because you're there, but it's... And, and again, I've, I've watched this for, I mean, I've been here for 18 years. And especially in this last year, I, I really took a good hard look at the potential of what that could do. And I do see the parties. I mean, I'm not neglecting that there are people that come there set up at 6 a.m. because they want to be there, okay, because we don't take reservations for those pavilions at the park. So, you know, it's like a first come, first serve. So if you have one group of people that's coming there, but you have 20 other groups that are coming, they're finding a way. They're making a way. They're bringing pop-up tents. They're having a tent brought there and put up and taken down. They're praying that it's sunny. So, I mean, you, you may have one group or one family, and it could be 15 people, but then they take over that whole space. So we're looking to be there full time. Yeah, we do take it up. Yes, I understand that it is um, a public facility right now. Um, and the area that's underneath there, you know, I mean, it, it's enough for what we're looking to do, but people don't use the whole thing every day for the summer. They just don't. Unless it's the one family that's there. So does anybody else have a downside? I mean, can you see future downsides to doing this? The only question I would have is, so you're investing a lot of money. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'm going to tell you, I'm super excited about this. <clears throat> I hear constantly from people in Muskego, they want someplace on the lake to go. I have no draw to go to this park because my kids are grown. This would draw me to that park because I would go there to eat, just like I would go to Bass's Bay. I think this is great if we can make it work. But the question is, you're going to invest all that money. I have a lot of friends who own businesses. Mm -hmm. What if it doesn't work in two or three years? If it doesn't work, it doesn't for, I mean, I, I've been in business since 2003, okay? And is it easy? No. But I have the drive to do it, and this is something I've wanted to do if it's here or somewhere else. Um, and I appreciate uh, your support. But if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's my investment, and it's out the window to say, right? Um, and again, you know, if it, if it doesn't, it doesn't, but there's no, there's, everything is going to be paid for up front, so there's no, you know, because that was one of, I think, I think that that would have been a potential objection is because you're saying, well, if you took a lien out on this or, or took out a loan for this, you know, then there would be a lien on this, and then, you know, this could happen, this could happen. That's not going to happen here. So, you know, <clears throat> there's always going to be pros and cons to anything like this. This is going to be new, potentially, or maybe not, for Muskego. Um, it's a change. People love change or they don't love change. Go back to the park, you know, when people want to tear down the houses over there and all of those issues that we had, that have been a huge change. There are people for it, people against it. it it's just a matter of if we want to do something different and new. And Muskego wouldn't be the first, per, first community to lease to a private entity um, their property for uh, a business for profit. Mayor, did you want to talk? Yes, I did. Yeah. Oh, sure. Something quick. I know I think this is hard for all of you, and the reason why is I think it's a little bigger than all of you. It's a, a city owned park, and um, it's a big financial investment the city's made that the public uses. So I think because we've never seen this before, what I it probably needs to go to Committee of the Whole for the Council to have a bigger discussion regarding a P3, regarding safety, you know, all input and everything else. So with that, what I think needs to come from you 
is very clear, which probably staff can do too, is very clear direction of how that park is currently used and whatever plans you had for it to be used in the future so that the council can have that real clear information. So if you, you can define how it's used. If you, if you want to just direct staff to put that together, that's fine. I mean, you're still welcome to make any kind of recommendation though, but it is strictly a recommendation. So I just wanted to maybe make it easier because it looks like people are confused. <laughs> Yeah, that's true, because they said they were thinking of another pavilion. I have no idea what other plans. So the current, the pavilion that's proposed is a 15-foot octagon, which will hold maybe three picnic tables, maybe four, no restroom access, no electric access, no water access. It's basically meant for the people who are fishing down on the pier way at the other end by the handicapped pier to be able to get out of the sun at some point. Um, somebody could rent it and use it for a gathering and sit there, but they have, you know, they can't bring a radio, they can't do any of the things that they do underneath the shelter. And it is a long walk from that area back to the restrooms which are attached to the rear of this pavilion. The bathrooms would still be open at all times, right? Even when you're closed? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it would be this. As far as the restrooms, nothing of that changes. I mean, they're locked at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. So they open up at 7 a.m. and they're locked at 10. Mm -hmm. You know, and during the course of the day, you know, you know, we would be taking care of that as far as just maintaining it because that's important too for any guests. I don't care if it's for just the general public or for what we would be proposing. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, basically, so basically it's about 70 to 80 people, approximately. And, and, and again, that's within a delineated area. You know, and I, and I do appreciate, you know, your concern about the parking and, and the usage of it, you know, and, and I, do, I do think about that as well. Um, but I think there are viable um, options that you know, if we work together on it, that, that can happen. I just don't think your proposal is detailed enough to make, for us to make a decision. Well, I, I, I'm not saying I'm opposed to this or that I'm for it, but I have a lot of questions about it. I think there's a lot more information that needs to be had and <coughs> maybe uh, some public, additional public input. Well, I'm, I'm here to answer whatever questions you have. And when it comes to the detail of the proposal, um, to be honest with you, you know, I provided um, an overview of what we're looking to do. But when it comes to my full business proposal, I'm not here, and I'm being honest with you, I'm not going to just lay that out for everyone to see to say, okay, here you are. That's not a smart business decision on my part. So for me to say, here you go, this is everything I'm going to do or, or going and drilling deeper than what we did here, um, I did provide from you know the questions that were asked of me so that you had a, a, a little bit deeper um, information about from water to power to sewer bathrooms etc you know we did do that due diligence and we provided <coughs> that but if you have questions about I, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer anything you have with respect to that beyond what I have right here Questions, discussion, anybody want to make a motion? I think we should probably move this on to a committee of the whole meeting so okay. everybody on council can discuss it. Um, and I, if you guys can provide more information from any of the questions that were. Well, one thing I would like asked. to do, and sorry, um, but what I'd like to say is that, you know, and I appreciate this, you know, whatever you decide here, I, I totally understand and I respect. Um, if it goes to the committee a whole, I, I, I know that sometimes, you know, when it comes to these different committees and meetings and things, it gets drawn out longer and longer and longer. Um, our goal is to be prepared and ready to go by May, um, which there's a lot of work to do from just the physical aspect of things, et cetera. So if there's questions that need to be answered before this next meeting, I would like to know what those are. And I think that that would be fair to everyone and not wasting um, this, committee's time, the committee of the whole, or the council's meeting uh, time. That's a good point. 
okay? Because that, I, I just want to continue to move this forward. And I need, I, it's just important for me to get you what you need ahead of time so that we don't keep going in this whole cycle because, you know, a week goes by, two weeks go by, and before you know it, you know, we got sunshine. Is there a second to the motion to uh, move this to the Committee of the Whole? No second. <laughs> Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Let's go <coughs> to the Committee. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any... Uh, Announcements or communications? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor <coughs> signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. of the park issue and